Hello and welcome back, it's Shrike here with another D&D video and today I'm going to be showing you how to upload and set up a map in Foundry VTT. So the other week I uploaded a video which gave you an overview of what Foundry VTT is and how to do certain things in it which you can check out down in the description or I'll make sure to put a card up in the corner. The biggest bit of feedback I got from that video is that people want to know how to upload maps, sort out the walls, the lighting, the sounds, stuff like that so that's what this video is going to be. Before we actually jump into Foundry VTT and we get on with all of that though, I just want to let you know I upload D&D content here on YouTube twice a week, so make sure to subscribe if you want to take part in discussions, improve your game or keep up to date with D&D news. I've also been streaming recently over on Twitch and I want to give streaming on YouTube a go to decide what sort of platform I want to continue the streaming on, so that's another reason to subscribe so you can see when I go live. Without any further ado, let's jump into Foundry VTT while I show you how to upload a map and what you need to do with it once it's in the tool. This is now Foundry VTT that we're in. If it's all a bit confusing to you, I definitely suggest go and look at my overview video that's going to go through all of the buttons and what you can do in Foundry VTT. So go and watch that and then come back and watch this. So to upload a map, the very first thing you're going to need to do is go to the scenes directory, which is in the top right up here. And then this is where all of your scenes or your maps will be listed. You can also put them in folders and stuff like that to keep it nice and organized. The next thing you're going to do is go to this button down here, which says create scene. And once you click that, it's going to bring up this window with quite a lot of information that might be a bit overwhelming, but we're going to go through it here. So the first thing you need to do is put in a scene name. So we're just going to put in test, but make sure to put in a proper name for your map so that you can easily find out which one it is later on. So the next thing you're going to want to do is go to where it says background image just here. And this is where you're going to actually upload your map, which you do so by just pressing this button here. It will automatically put you into the Foundry VTT area, but there's a little upload section here and you just click choose file and then you locate the map on your computer. Once you have chosen it, it's going to check it in whichever folder you use in here and then you can just click that and select file and it will put it in there. If you know the width and the height of the image, then put it in here. You can then choose a background color, which is the color of this area here on the map behind me. I like to actually choose this once the map is in the tool so I can see what sort of color would go with it. The grid is probably the most tricky part about this. This is lining up the grid on the map to the grid in the tool. If you don't have a grid on the map, it probably makes it a little bit easier, but I'm going to show you it with a grid on the map so we can see how you would line them up. So this lighting and vision section here, there's a few tick boxes. So this is if you do want the tokens to have certain visibility. So you would untick this if you wanted your people to be able to see the whole map straight off. But if you want walls to block them and lighting and stuff like that, you'd make sure it's clicked. Global illumination would be if you weren't using lighting, you could click that. And then just as long as they've got line of sight of an area, they can see it. Fog exploration means that if they've been to a place in the map before, it won't cover it up with the fog of war again. I'll show you what that looks like when you get into it, but if you do want it to be covered up again, you would just untick this box here. Darkness we're going to get onto a bit later on in the video when we talk about lighting. This will come into play and you'll understand how this slider works. So then we go on to the ambience and atmosphere area, which has a few little things you can do. The first of which is this audio playlist. So you can select one of your playlists to automatically start running when you load up this scene. You can also put weather effects over the top of the scene, which we'll show you a little bit later as well. And you can choose the initial view position so that when they load into the map where they actually start. And then access controls the permissions, so most of the time you're probably going to want to leave it as GM only, and that means that the GM will see it in their scenes on the right here, but if players go into the scenes they wouldn't see this map. So let's go ahead and save changes and let's see what happens. So you can see on the right here is the test scene, and if you wanted to get back into those options again, you just have to click test and it will bring it all up like so. But we want to actually show it here, so we're going to right click it and click activate. So the map we have loaded in is the Barovian Church from Curse of Strahd, as you can see here. And there's a few things that I want to go through before we actually start putting in the walls and the lighting and stuff like that. So when we were importing this, we didn't choose the width and the length. We just left it as what it set. So you can see that the edge is actually outside of the map, which means that in theory, the players could move off of the map. 
So that's why it's important to set your width and height. But if you do forget and you can't remember what this is, you can just put a wall around the edge of the map with no sort of windows or doors or anything like that. And it will stop the players from being able to go off of the map and into this area. I also now want to show you how the darkness works. So if we go back into here and I'm going to move the darkness scale up and you see it puts an overlay and then we'll also show you what the weather effect looks like. So let's put some rain on there. You have to click save changes for rain and hopefully you can see that there is now rain going over the top of the map. And if we take a look at the grid, if we scroll right in, you will see that the grids are not aligned. So the grid on the map to the grid on the tool. So let's go into the settings for that again and work out how to do that. For the sake of this, I'm going to put the grid opacity all the way up just so that it is a harsher black line and then we'll put it back down again once it's all lined up. So when we're in the settings in the grid area, the first thing you want to do is just choose the grid type. So if you're using hexes, you can do that here as well, or you can put it as grid list. We're going to leave it as square because that's what the map is. You can also change the grid color here. So if you don't want it as a black grid, you can change it to something else. But I like to leave it on black grid while we're setting it up at the beginning here because it's more visible. You can also change the distance. So if each square is actually 10 foot instead of 5 foot, you can change that here and you can track movement in this tool. So that's actually quite important to do. And then when we're setting up the grid to make sure it's the same as the map, the easiest way to do it is by clicking this button here. And that's going to now change your grids to red, as you can see there, and make it easier for you to get it correct. Now over here, you can change some of the stuff again, but what's important is this little bit of text under each one. So the background image scale, I usually leave this and change the grid size rather than changing the background. And then with the grid size, it says you can use the alt and mouse wheel or alt up and down arrows to adjust the size of the grid. That's the first thing we're going to do here. And then you can use the arrow keys to offset it left, right, up and down. So if we start doing that, you can see that the squares are getting smaller or you could make them bigger. So I'm going to make them roughly what I think the right size is. And then I'm going to use the arrows and I'm just going to pick any of the corners and I'm going to make it right nice and tight into the corner. So I was choosing this corner here so you can see it's nice there, but it's still a little bit too small. So we hold alt mouse wheel up to get it a bit bigger and then we do the same again. And that's almost there. But if you look off the edge over here, you can still see it's not quite right. So we'll alt and up again to make it one more bigger. Basically, you just keep doing that until you get it right. So that's still not quite right over here. So it's looking good here. But the further away from the point that I've put it on, the worse it looks. So we're going to go one higher again. So I spent a bit of time wiggling it back and forth and I couldn't get it exactly right. And I'm not sure if that's the map's fault or my fault, but I was taking a bit too long on it. And I'm just trying to record something for your benefits and I don't want to spend much longer. So I've left it. You can see it is still slightly off. But what I would do in this instance if I couldn't get it correct but the tokens are still going to be staying within the, the square roughly is just take the grid opacity all the way down to hide the grid in Foundry VTT and then now it looks absolutely fine because it's just using the grid from the original map. And just to show you that the token is still going to stay within the grid, I'm going to move it all about and you can see that the token still stays within the grid even if it's not exact so you can see that there it's a little bit off but it's not too much of an issue on a small map like this but you're definitely going to want to get the grid perfect on a bigger map so now you've got the map in and you've got the grid correct the next thing we're going to want to do is put in the walls and if i go to the wall tool over here on the left you'll see that there are quite a lot of options so let's quickly go through them and explain the scenarios where you might use them so this first one is the wall tool so this is where you would draw your building walls or any sort of walls like that. So if I show you how that works, you just draw the wall. And then if we go back and select the token, you'll see it blocks out that area there. The next one down is the terrain wall. So this one is a little bit different. So if you were trying to block a rock that you can see partially over, you'd use something like this. And if we use this altar up here, for example, using the terrain wall, so I'm just going to draw around the altar just like this. 
So there's now a terrain wall around that altar and if I select the token you'll see that rather than stopping it exactly where the wall starts it stops it at the back and actually shows the object that you have circled and then drops it at the back. And if I move it around, it will do the same from every single angle. The next one below that is an invisible wall. So if you wanted to put an invisible wall, which isn't actually a physical thing, you could just put a wall there just like that. And then the players with their tokens won't actually be able to move through the wall. So they can move freely everywhere else. But when they come to the wall, they can't actually move through it. The next wall is known as the ethereal wall so this you could put here and although it would look like a wall to the players if they investigate it they might find that it's not actually a solid wall and they can move through it just like that. The next tool is to draw your doors so if I show you on this door here you can draw a little door like that and then from the player's point of view it will be a little door symbol like this that they can then open and close to reveal what's behind it. As a DM, you can also lock it, which means when the players try to open it up, they are not able to. You've also got secret doors that work the same way as your normal door, but obviously they would be hidden to your players. You've got clone walls that just clone walls and make some walls. You've got this snap to grid ability here as well so if you select that then when you're drawing your walls they'll snap to the grid and then you've got your clear walls which will delete all of the walls on the scene. So when you've got your map in all you would do is draw the walls and a little tip for you if you hold control when you let go of a wall it will start a new one from the end point of that first wall and then you can just let go of the control key when you don't want it to connect anymore and just click and then you've drawn a nice little wall there. I like to do all one type of wall first, so I would go around here and I would just draw all of these walls along here, just like this. And if you have a little circular bit like this or a whole circular wall, you can just hold the control key and you drag out from one of the points. And then every time you click, it's going to make a little wall and you can just go around it. I'm obviously doing this very rough. You can make it as exact as you like and then let go of the key when you get to the end. And if I show you now what it looks like from the tokens point of view, you can see that they can't actually see through all of the walls. We haven't put in the doors and the windows yet, so you can just walk through the windows like such and walk through the doors. So let's go and do them next. So let's do the windows first and I use the invisible walls because that way the player can still see through the window but they can't actually travel through it. Okay, so we've put all the windows in and just to show you what that looks like. So you can still see through all of the windows, but now the token can't actually go through the windows. So now let's put in the doors. So there's only a few in this map, which is handy. And then let's show you what that looks like now. So now you can't actually see through the doors like you can the windows, but there are these little door icons. And if a player was to go up to it and click it, it would then open it into the little room like so, and then they can close it again. And as a DM, you can lock them as you wish, and then the players won't be able to go through them. So that's all we're going to do for the walls section of this map. But if you wanted to put in some terrain walls on your map, you can do that. Some secret doors, stuff like that. You can throw them into the map and hopefully now you understand how it all works along with the vision. So let's talk about lighting now and just to show you how vision works in this tool if you click on the tabaxi who has night vision you can see that they can see for quite far when there's no light sources on the map. But if we then click on the human that doesn't have dark vision they can see nothing in this map and they can still move around but they can barely see anything at all. So let's put some lighting into this map so our human pal here can see. So you need to go to the lighting tab here and you can select the draw light source and you can see on this map there's already some light sources around here so let's use them for guidance. So once you have that tool selected you just click the point of origin and drag it and you'll see there are two lines. So the first line is where the bright light will come up to and then the second line is where the dim light will come up to. So we're going to drag it quite far, it's going to give us 15 feet of dim light along with the 15 feet of bright light. 
And then now if we select our human, you can see that they can see this light source and you can see the ring of where the bright light is to where the dim light is. So let's go ahead and put some more light sources on the map. So let's just put another one there and then let's put one down in this corridor as well. So it can have a little look down there. So now clicking on the human, you can see how that works. It lights up the areas where the light source is a lot more than the other areas, but still enough so that they can move around and can see. Just so you know with lighting as well, if the character brings out a torch or some sort of light source, you can just right click on their token, go to the cog here, and then on the vision tab, you can put how much dim light and how much bright light they have. So let's say 30 feet of bright light and then 60 feet of dim light. And if you update it, you'll see that it gives them a bit of bright light and then more dim light around it. And if they move around, the light source moves with them. So once you have added the walls and you've added the lighting, the last thing you might want to do is add some sound effects on the map as well. And to add the sound effect, you just have to go to this symbol here and then this button here, and then you click and drag the exact same way as you did with the lighting tool. So let's say that this here is actually a fireplace and you wanted to put a sound of a fireplace in, you can just click and drag it out and you can see a circle. That circle is how far away that we'll be able to hear the fireplace. So if we make that quite large, and then it will bring up this little box here and you have to put in the audio source. So this is the file which is going to play when they get into that area. So I've put in a sound of a fireplace and you can also tick here volume easing, which means if the token is further away, it is quieter. And if they're right next to the source, it will be nice and loud. So we're going to put that in as well. And then we're going to update sound. And as I'm moving, Towards it and further away, it should get louder and quieter. So that's how you add sound. I usually source my sounds from a service called Epidemic Sounds, which is where you can get sound effects and music from. It's a paid service, so it's up to you. I'm sure there are free ones out there, but I'm not sure what they are. I use that paid service. And then once I have set up the map fully, I've added the walls, I've added the music, I've added the lighting. The last thing I always do is set the starting position. So in this case, it could be this bit of road outside the front is where I think they're going to turn up. So I go right in, scroll in like this to where you want them to see and go back to the settings. And then there's this little button here next to initial view position. If you click that, it will set the view position to what you're looking at now. You can just save changes. And now when you activate that, it's going to force all of the players into this view position at the beginning. So there you have it, there's how you upload a map and then add the walls, lighting and sound effects in Foundry VTT. If you found this video useful, please do give it a like, it helps me to grow this channel and make sure to subscribe so you see future videos that I make which will help you with your D&D game. But until next time, happy gaming.